This is our last video of Unit 8, with a focus on the final stage of aerobic cellular respiration, the electron transport chain. This video is meant to help you with these course goals. Pause the video and check them out. So far, glucose has gone through glycolysis, the link reactions, and the Krebs cycle. During those processes, a lot of NADH and FADH2 was made. The goal of the electron transport chain is to deal with the NADH and FADH2. The electron transport chain will convert the high energy electrons from NADH to FADH2 into a proton gradient. In a way, it's like all of the money in the bank that was stored in NADH and FADH2 will now be converted to ATP. Of the 36 ATP made per glucose in aerobic cellular respiration, 32 of them are made right here and right now in the process of a bunch of redox reactions. The electron transport chain gets its name because it's literally a chain of electron transporters. These electron transporters and enzymes are embedded in the inner mitochondrial membrane. So this diagram shows all of the spaces of the mitochondria. Here is the outer mitochondrial membrane, and here is the inner mitochondrial membrane. That makes this the intermembrane space, and this the mitochondrial matrix. This compartment way outside of here is the cytoplasm. So electron transport chain components are embedded in the inner mitochondrial membrane. The inner mitochondrial membrane is highly folded, into cristae, and cristae increase the surface area of the inner mitochondrial membrane, so more electron transport chain proteins can be embedded. Here's chain member number one, number two, number three, number four, and number five, and the final electron acceptor is oxygen. Let's take a closer look into what's actually happening. First off, Electron transporters will oxidize NADH and FADH2. In other words, NADH and FADH2 drop off their high energy electrons to the electron transport chain. This transfer of electrons is a redox reaction where NADH and FADH2 are oxidized and the electron transporters are reduced. Once the high-energy electrons are in the system of the electron transport chain, the high-energy electrons are transferred from one electron transporter to the next in the chain. Each exchange of electrons is a separate redox reaction. This means that each electron carrier is more electronegative than the electron carrier before it. At the end of the chain, you can see oxygen as the final electron acceptor. Oxygen has the most electronegativity out of all of these. When oxygen accepts the electrons, oxygen also combines with hydrogen to make the end product of water. When the high energy electrons are transferred from one carrier to the next, little bits of energy are released with each transfer. The bits of energy that are released are used to do some transport work. That transport work is to move hydrogen ions, which are the same as protons, from the mitochondrial matrix down here to the intermembrane space. This is active transport. Remember, active transport moves molecules from low concentration to high concentration with the help of an energy source. Here's hydrogen ions moving from the matrix to the intermembrane space, building up a high concentration of hydrogen ions in the intermembrane space. The energy source that's used to do this is the energy released from the high energy electrons. I know this is confusing, but hang in there. I want to emphasize how high energy electrons are the energy source for moving hydrogen ions. The electron transport chain is a chain of electron transporters, shown here. Think about each of those transporters as being a step. Each transporter has a higher electronegativity than the next, which means that uh, the next 
transporter on the chain is going to want the electron more than the previous transporter on the chain. And with each transfer of electrons from one step to the next, the electrons lose a little bit of their potential energy. It's that released potential energy that drives active transport of protons. Finally, at the end of the electron transport chain, the electrons have relatively low energy, not so much useful energy for this process. It's at that point that the electrons are accepted by oxygen and make water. The electron tra transport chain's job is to make a proton gradient, not to make ATP just yet. To do this, make the proton gradient, the proteins in the chain need to be able to do two things. First, be an electron transporter, moving the electrons from one transporter to the next to the next. Second, the, some of the electron transporters need to be protein pumps. You can see three spots in the electron transport chain where the transporters are also proton pumps. These transporters transport protons from the mitochondrial matrix to the intermembrane space. The first carrier, the third carrier, and the fifth carrier are all carriers and proton pumps. Once the proton gradient is established, the energy from this gradient is actually what's used to make ATP. There's a specialized protein in the inner mitochondrial matrix called ATP synthase. Check it out, it looks pretty cool. ATP synthase phosphorylates ADP to make ATP. And ATP synthase also acts as a channel protein to let these protons back in to the mitochondrial matrix. Here's how it works. You can see that the rotor part of ATP synthase is embedded in the inner mitochondrial membrane. Hydrogen ions pass through a channel in the rotor. Those hydrogen ions are moving in by facilitated diffusion from high concentration to low concentration through the ATP synthase channel protein. The movement of protons through ATP synthase powers the rod and catalytic head this is a lot like how flowing water powers a water wheel to move around and make electricity. So the energy of the flowing protons creates the energy needed by the enzyme to join this negative phosphate to the negatively charged phosphates of ADP to make ATP. The process of generating the proton gradient for ATP synthase is called chemiosmosis. First, the proton gradient is generated using the energy of redox reactions to actively transport protons from the mitochondrial matrix out to the intermembrane space. Once the proton gradient is built up, then the protons move from the intermembrane space back to the mitochondrial matrix by facilitated diffusion through ATP synthase. This process, chemiosmosis, is how the electron transport chain is connected to ATP synthesis. Here's a recap of the whole process. Pyruvate and NADH from glycolysis is brought into the mitochondrial matrix. The NADH goes right to the electron transport chain, but the pyruvate goes to the link reactions and the Krebs cycle. NADH and FADH2 drop off electrons at the electron transport chain. The electron transport chain passes the electrons down a system of transporters, releasing small amounts of energy with each transfer. The energy released is used to pump protons from the mitochondrial matrix to the intermembrane space. Finally, that built-up proton gradient is able to move through ATP synthase. The energy from the protons moving through ATP synthase is used to join together ADP and phosphate to make ATP. Here's an equation that we can use for the electron transport chain and subsequent oxidative phosphorylation, making ATP. 10 NADH plus 2 FADH2 plus 6 oxygens react to make 32 ATPs and six waters. Thinking about where the reactants come from, 
NADH, two of them came from glycolysis, two from the link reactions, and six from the Krebs cycle. FADH2 came from the Krebs cycle. Oxygen is what we breathe in or it diffuses into an organism from the environment. Thinking about where the products are going, all of this ATP is used to do cell work, and the water can be kept in the organism or leave by osmosis. Last, we need to remember where in the cell this takes place. The electron transporters are embedded in the inner mitochondrial membrane, and the protons first move from the matrix to the intermembrane space, then the protons move through ATP synthase from the intermembrane space back into the matrix. There's one more thing I want to talk about in this video. During cell respiration, ATP is generated in two different ways. Substrate level phosphorylation is one of the ways ATP is generated, and oxidative phosphorylation is the other way ATP is generated. What these both have in common is phosphorylation. Earlier in the year, we defined phosphorylation as the transfer of phosphates from one molecule to another. Usually we see ATP as the phosphate donor in phosphorylation reactions, but in the case of cell respiration, ADP is the phosphate acceptor to make ATP. So we can't just take a phosphate from ATP and add that phosphate to ADP to get ATP, or else that cycle just goes nowhere. So phosphorylation of ADP is different. Substrate level phosphorylation is how ATP is generated in glycolysis and the Krebs cycle, and it's shown right here. What happens is the phosphate donor is some substrate that's not ATP. The phosphate is transferred from that phosphate donor to ADP to make ATP and an unphosphorylated product. The enzyme that phosphorylates ADP in substrate level phosphorylation is a kinase. The other way ADP is phosphorylated to make ATP is by oxidative phosphorylation, the process that we just reviewed at the end of the electron transport chain. That's what we saw here. In oxidative phosphorylation, free phosphate, um, called PI or, or inorganic phosphate, is added to ADP to make ATP. The energy used to power oxidative phosphorylation comes from the proton gradient that was made using the power of redox reactions. The enzyme that phosphorylates ADP in oxidative phosphorylation is ATP synthase. Let's review the big picture of what happened in aerobic cellular respiration. First, Glucose is fed into the glycolysis reactions, generating two ATPs, two NADHs. The other products of glycolysis, pyruvate, is fed on to the link reactions and the Krebs cycle, making two more ATPs, eight NADHs here and here, and two FADH2s. All of the NADH and FADH2s drop off high-energy electrons to the electron transport chain. The electron transport chain releases all of the energy from the high-energy electrons to build up a proton gradient. ATP synthase then collapses the proton gradient using the energy of the gradient to make ATP by oxidative phosphorylation. This last part, oxidative phosphorylation, makes about 32 or 34 ATPs per glucose. Let's recap here. So the electron transport chain takes high energy electrons from the NADH and FADH2 generated by early steps, earlier steps of cellular respiration. The electron transport chain is a series of redox reactions where the energy of the electrons is released in little bits at a time and that energy is used to generate a proton gradient. The proton gradient flows through ATP synthase, creating energy to make ATP by oxidative phosphorylation. Together, the generation of the proton gradient and its subsequent collapse through ATP synthase is called chemiosmosis.